In this video, I want to give you an overview what you can expect from this course and what these words mean here so what you can so that you can get an intuition for for what a large scale optimization problem might be and what you can do with it okay let us first uh, uh, state that um, convex optimization is the minimization minimization of a convex function over a convex set. So what does this mean, a convex set? So a set like this is convex um, because Convex means that for any uh, two points you can form mixtures. Uh, in this uh, in this case, it, it will be uh, usually a, st a straight line, but there are other notions of convexity. Um, but uh, in in this course, we stick to straight lines. So for each two points in the set, the straight line is also contained in the set. So this is convex and other sets are non-convex. So here you see that you have these two points and the straight line is not uh, contained in the set. So you see you want to you want to be able to if you have two points uh, which you might uh, which which satisfies your, which satisfy a constraint, then you want to be able to make compromises between those two points. You want to um, mix those two points and and probably and, and possibly get a better approach. So what is a convex function? Um, unfortunately, I can only show you one-dimensional convex functions. So um, let's do this. So a convex function would be something like this. And here you see that you can take two points also here and make some compromises. And the notion will be that the, the mixture of function uh, val or the, the function value of the mixture is as least uh, at least as good as the mixture of the function value okay so a convex function means that you can you can take this compromise here and you are at least as good if not better than uh, taking the compromise between the function values, so what you what you would expect. So uh, this is one example. Uh, another example would be a function like like this. It does not need to be differentiable, um, which will actually be a large part of this course how to deal with that because that happens quite often in practice that uh, you get some some points where we don't where you can't just take the gradient and set it to zero. So this is convex and you can also have a mixture like here something linear and then something so this is also convex. These are convex. Um, what is not convex would be a function uh, yeah, a function like this or a function like this, or a function like this. These are non-convex. Okay, so now we have just an intuition what convex functions mean, uh, what convex optimization means. So the, the guideline is that if you take compromises, something in the middle between two feasible points, um, then you can expect to be 
at least as good as the compromise between the, fun between the, the function values at those two extreme points. Um, yeah, we'll see at some concrete examples what this means. Um, and large scale, just large scale is a kind of undefined um, uh, uh, um, yeah, term. So it means like you have either a larger number of variables or you have a larger number of constraints. What does this mean? This always depends on, on your on your on your like time and computing budget. This can start at about a thousand, can be can be larger, of course, and can be much more than that. Okay. So uh, the reason why you, why you don't want to uh, w w so so what why the number of variables matters is that you you can only use um, first order information first order information means something like gradients what you usually cannot do is uh, have large Hessians, so second uh, derivatives, uh, because um, the, these methods which use the second derivative, like the Newton method, uh, which you might, might have heard of, they uh, solve equations uh, with this. So if you have a large number of variables, a thousand is probably still fine for that. Um, but if it comes to really large numbers like millions of variables, uh, then you can't just take this this uh, uh, huge matrix. You can't you can't even put it in memory, and this is a problem. So in our course, we use only first order information, and often this means um, that you can use some uh, stochastic uh, methods for that. Um, but in this course, I think we might not uh, get this far. Um, but um, oftentimes, these stochastic methods have uh, very similar approaches to what we are doing. Just they have some uh, randomness in, in them. Okay. Um, but usually, we uh, so so sometimes stochastic methods are used. But here in this course. We just um, content ourselves with uh, deterministic methods. So, what you what can you expect from this course? So, um, uh, what 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 is the what is what are the benefits of convexity? Um, one very important point is that all local optima are global optima this means you can't have something like this where you have uh, some some global optimum uh, some local optimum here but uh, the the global optimum is well we don't know from from this drawing but it, it's at least smaller so there is a, a minimum which has a much lower function value than this uh, than, than this local one okay uh, th this is a very useful thing then uh, we have so-called sub differentials and uh, these are replacements for the gradient um, even if the function is not 
differentiable. Um, so here, for example, you see that the um, in in this point, uh, you see that this probably an absolute value is not differentiable, but you can still assign a subdifferential. So here you would you uh, at at one point uh, to the left you would assign the, the, the gradient minus 1, for example, if this is an absolute value because this is differentiable. Here you would assign plus 1. And in the middle, you just take uh, uh, the set between minus 1 and plus 1. And we will see uh, why this makes sense and why this helps us with the uh, dealing with non-smooth functions. And this leads us to directly one of the first um, uh, um, first optimization methods, uh, the so-called subgradient method, and we will analyze this, uh, which uses the subgradient and therefore allows you to even minimize non-differentiable functions. Um, another thing will be uh, duality. What does duality do for us? Duality allows us to assign um, uh, closely related problem to the original one and very often these things are solved together in a lot of methods um, both problems are often solved together. And we will also see the meaning of the solution of the dual problem. This has to do uh, with uh, if you perturb your original problem, how does your, your optimum uh, change? And this is also um, some very in important uh, insight into, into the structure of uh, convex optimization problems. And from this we also get um, uh, we get optimality conditions. So you know the first order optimality condition um, a function assumes a minimum uh, whenever the gradient is zero. And we will replace this by subdifferentials, and for for the and, and duality allows us to to formulate uh, so-called KKT conditions, um, which are which which give you um, if if your problem has a structure, then this um, respects the structure and and does not mix up terms which which are hard to handle together. Um, so these optimality conditions are very useful if, if, your, if your problem can be composed into, into uh, different components. And these optimality conditions are also closely related, related to constraint qualifications. If you have heard something about uh, nonlinear optimization, then you know constraint qualifications like the ABD, uh, you know Mangazari and Fromovitz uh, constraint qualifications, and you know the Slater constraint constraint qualification, and the Slater, and we will we'll see how duality gives us the Slater constraint qualification, and also other constraint qualifications whenever you know the dual problem. Okay, and um, another very big part will be um, algorithms for um, certain problem structures. And here we will uh, dis uh, we will consider the forward backward. or proximal gradient, um, we will see some primal dual 
algorithms uh, which uh, come together with this duality and here in particular we will we will look at the chambol poc algorithm and in the forward backward uh, section we will also have a look at accelerations this is a very cool feature where you where you take an algorithm and you have the exact same cost per iteration as in the usual forward backward algorithm but by making some very sophisticated tweaks you get actually a much better performance and we will also discuss this so this is the plan for our lecture here and i hope you enjoy it <laughs>